Always love to talk to this guy when it's Lions and Vikings. Ben Lieber, former NFL linebacker, Vikings sideline reporter, K fan, and uh, of course the ABC affiliate in Minneapolis, a TV host there, the all everything Ben Lieber. How you doing, Ben? Oh, I'm doing great, Ryan. How you guys doing? Fantastic. Good. Good, to talk, good to talk to you, Ben. Ben, my guy's hey, going. Hey, hey Braylon. Go ahead, Ben. I was going to say, hey, Braylon, congratulations, man. <laughs> I appreciate that, That's man. Thank you. you. Thank you. It's crazy, man. When you start to get in the Hall of Fame, you realize you're old. So uh, <laughs> it's bittersweet. No, but I really appreciate that, man. A long time. I can't wait to be with the family tonight. The fellas are coming out, so it's going to be a party. Yeah, man. Celebrate. You earned it. You I know, appreciate we're all, that. We are all getting old, but, you know, the fact that uh, you're being recognized for all the hard work you put in, this is awesome, man. Enjoy, enjoy every second of it. Hey, Ben, I really appreciate it. Thank you, man. Ben, let me start yeah. with Minnesota. How in the world, if you would have told me that the Vikings would have been 5-0 and uh, when the Lions met them, uh, I would have probably said, I don't know about that. Uh, what has been working for the Vikings so far this season? I think, I think everybody outside of that building would probably say the same thing. I think we're all, you know, we're pleasantly surprised, but nobody really had this going in the season. Nobody, nobody predicted the Vikings would be undefeated at this point. We knew the start of the season would be kind of a gauntlet of teams to go through. Um, and, man, they have, they have surprises. Obviously, you got to start with Darnold. Darnold has been very efficient. He's not been without mistakes. Um, you know, he's certainly made some mistakes. You know, he's been maybe a little careless slash risky when he didn't need to be. Um, but so far, that the ball has bounced our direction in some of those decisions, and uh, it really hasn't cost us that much. Uh, the other thing is having Aaron Jones. We knew that this offense needed to find a little bit of balance. Um, we didn't realize how important it was going to be for the passing attack and just for the efficiency of this offense to have a nice running attack. As you guys know, there in Detroit, it's everything. You know, when you can run the football and run the run the football physically. But I think the story really is how well the defense is playing, how well we're stopping the run, how much we're taking the ball away, how much we're giving all these offenses a whole bunch of fits. There are some yards to be gained by our, our, our secondary, but that's okay because we are doing such a good job of keeping everybody out of the end zone and making every team work for every single point that they're going to get. So um, it's really been complimentary football. How much of a difference has Brian Flores made uh, being added to that staff, defensive coordinator, and that defense really seems to be humming? Yeah, I would say, you know, we don't really know how much that he influences personnel, but we know that he was 100% behind the Ivan Pace situation, and that has to, that has to lead me to believe that he's behind a lot of these other personnel um, additions. You look at Grenard, you look at Van Ginkle, um, you look at some of the guys in the secondary. I think that he, his impact is more than just X's and O's. His impact is, I need to find some players that can fit my scheme. I need to find some dogs that can fit my attitude. And I know that everybody's talking about Daniil Hunter and all this other stuff, like, oh, we lost such a great player. Absolutely, we lost a great player. But here's what, what he didn't want to do in this defense, or he wasn't very good at. He wasn't good at dropping in coverage. He wasn't good at being up at the line of scrimmage in a two-point stance, you know, sugaring, trying to do something, baiting the offensive lineman, and then dropping back in a sort of a zone blitz. That's, what, that's the type of guys that we need, and that's what Grenard does. And that's absolutely what, what Van Ginkle is really good at. He's you know, had a pick six, had another interception against uh, the Jets, almost had another one against the Jets where he could have taken it to the house because he had the right read. He just slipped on the ground. But that ability to have that position flexibility to have big-time stud rushers and guys that can drop in coverage, uh, that's, that's what we're looking for with this defense. Hey, Ben, being a defensive guy yourself, uh, I think you know how we feel here in Detroit about Aiden Hutchinson and how depressed we are. But how excited is Kevin O'Connell and, and Sam Darnold? <laughs> well, look, you, you got to play the guys that are on the field. And I think everybody collectively around the, the whole NFL, around the sports world, is um, I think we're hurting for you guys. I mean, I, I want to see the best, you know, out on the field and do what they do and do it at a high level, especially in a huge game. And it, it sucks, man. I'm, it sucks that he's not going to be in the game. He's going to be out the whole season, it sounds like. I mean, very optimistic that maybe he crosses fingers that he can make it back to the playoffs. But um, that's going to be really, really tough to do. Um, I know that you guys are probably – sugarcoating the system, the, the situation a little bit. I look at this as like in the short term in the next week or two, unless you guys make a big trade here coming up in the next week or two. I mean, good luck trying to replace his productivity. I mean, yeah. he's, you know, half your guys' sacks. He's, you know, 41% of you guys' quarterback hits. I, I mean, 
that's not something that you just pick up and say, hey, guys, let's have a let's have a big group meeting here in the defensive line room. We're going to get this done collectively. <laughs> no, you, you would have been doing that before. And I, I think it's going to be really hard to replicate that. So, yes, um, you know, Sam Darnold is probably very, very thankful. And, you know, what you guys do defensively, it seems like to me, you guys, you guys don't blitz a lot. Certainly mm-hmm. not the way that Brian Flores blitzes. Um, mm-hmm. So you guys really – you know, have found a lot of success with the four-man rush, which is what everybody wants. How about on the offensive side of the ball? What you saw against the Dallas Cowboys, they literally uh, emasculated the Cowboys last week at home. What is your thoughts on the Lions offense compared to years in the past? Who do you think is the difference? <laughs> the whole offensive line. You guys, <laughs> you got some bad boys up front, man. <laughs> I tell you what, the way that you guys multiple times, that collectively all five guys, they just pushed that line of scrimmage and it was hard for the linebackers. It was hard for the safeties to figure out, you know, which, which hole am I going to take? Am I going to backdoor this run play? You know, because there's so much cutback run. It's like, Oh, do I guess, do I guess right? And maybe they're going to hit it backside. They just had that, that whole defense uh, second guessing every one of the reads and they couldn't even get a clean read because you guys just mashed on them up front. I mean, your guys' offensive line is so good. It's so fun to watch. I like how physical they are. And then obviously you've got the two backs, uh, the way that Montgomery runs, you know, so square line scrimmage. He's able to hit those backside plays. He runs so hard and so strong. And then Gibbs obviously has the speed and quickness around the edge. Um, It's going to be a great matchup. Um, I think this will be the toughest matchup you guys will have to go against, not just from us giving you a whole bunch to look at, but I think physicality we can match up pretty good. How about our old friend TJ Hawkinson? When does he do back with the Vikes? I hope this weekend, you know, <laughs> it's like, you know, and obviously he, they opened up the window and, you know, I know the eye test is the eye test. I, I haven't seen him run around in practice yet, but I've seen him plenty walking around. I saw him plenty in, in London uh, when we were just there. He looks great. I mean, he's, you know, he looks like he's a hundred percent when he's just walking around. Um, and as we all know, it's, it's, you know, much more than that. You got to find your explosiveness. You got to find that suddenness when you come back from an injury like this. And so hopefully, I don't know, man. Hopefully he can come back this weekend, but it's not the end of the world if he doesn't play in this game. Hey, Ben, uh, KG in the sound booth. Pleasure to talk to you and look forward to uh, taking that dub on Sunday. But (laughs) I got to ask you about uh, Aaron Jones, who's been great for you guys so far. Um, I know he didn't practice on Wednesday uh, due to a hamstring and I think a hip injury. Um, I know he missed that uh, Jets game in London, but is... uh, Aaron Jones on track to play. I know Kevin O'Connell said he was week to week, but what is his status so far? Well, with these soft tissue injuries, we don't really know. Um, you know they, I saw the initial report. It was some sort of maybe adductor or something like that. And then now it's been switched into a hamstring. E- either way, if you've ever had a hamstring injury, injury it's going to feel 100%. You're going to go through all the rehab. They're going to take you out to trainers. You're going to do some, some sudden start and stops, change of direction. And you're going to be like, yeah, it feels good. And then for whatever reason, you get in a game and it just, it just it, it weakens. You know, it doesn't feel quite the same. So I think they're going to be very cautious with him. I think we all know his injury history. We need him for the long haul. I just talked about how important he is to this offense. And again, that will be a much bigger blow to not have in this game if he doesn't play. But as far as the status goes, guys, I'm, I'm the same as you guys. I'm just watching this, this injury report. I don't know. I'm optimistic that he can play, but uh, it seems like, especially with the addition of Cam Akers, that they're maybe preparing for him not to play. Hey, Ben, what is the connection between Sam Darnold as well as Kevin O'Connell outside of being former New York Jets quarterbacks? What's that connection there? Because we've been watching all year, and it just seems that Sam Darnold's been waiting for Kevin O'Connell. Kevin O'Connell him seemed to be very in sync. What is the connection there? It's got to be more than just Justin Jefferson being the number one receiver in the league. Well, let's add in Josh McCown, the new the new Vikings quarterback, uh, North quarterback coach. He's... He's come in. I think those three guys, they're all in the, they're all speaking the same language. They've all yeah. been there. They understand what they're looking for. Um, they can they can talk to each other like quarterbacks. And so I think just that that symmetry of having every single meeting every single day, whether you're in a team meeting or you're going to break it down into the quarterback room, it's all the same verbiage. They all can talk to each other. They know how each other tick. Um, so somehow, some way, that message has gotten to him and. Uh, I think it's pretty easy to see with the way that he's been playing, the decisions he's been making. He's he's playing phenomenal. And the other thing is his leadership. I mean, the second yeah. that he got here, he knows the situation that, look, this is going to be J.J. McCarthy's team. We all know that. 
regardless of what happens this year, if the Vikings go on to win a Super Bowl, I mean, yeah, sorry, yeah. You, you, are, you are a guy for one year. This is McCarthy's team. Imagine how difficult that is to come in and, and try to win over the, the teammates and win over the locker room. And he did that from day one. And so the guys are all bought in. The chemistry is there. And obviously the chemistry with the coaching staff is there. Ben, I was going to ask you about that. And, I, and uh, I'm glad you brought it up. Sam Darnold, it's not like he's 35 years old. I mean, the guy potentially is just about to enter his prime. So uh, I guess you cleared that. I was going to ask you about J.J. McCarthy, who, you know, we're, we're both fond of, we're all fond of. Uh, no question, J.J.'s the guy and no matter what? That's my belief. I mean, we haven't heard that publicly, but I think, I don't know how it couldn't be. You know, because if... If Darnold goes out there and, and continues to do what he's doing, he makes a, a big push in the playoffs, and let's just say they get, get they get the team to the Super Bowl, well, that right there is you give this guy a contract extension. Like He, he is here for a long time. <laughs> you can't do that. You can't do that. So um, they love McCarthy. They when, when KOC talks about him, he just smiles. He glows. You know, we saw what he can do physically in practice and all the, all the stuff. We saw the one preseason game. But when they're like, this guy has the it factor, you – you can't measure that. You can't like you can't. You, it's so hard to find. And Braylon, you know that. You've yeah. been around some guys that are like that guy. Just has it. Whether it's a quarterback, whether it's a defensive lineman, whether it's a cornerback, some yeah. of these guys just have that it factor, and he's got it. So they're not going to replace him. They're not going to give Sam a long-term contract. So again, that's that's just my feeling. Um, I think something really has to change dramatically for anything else to be the case. I remember being uh, in Seattle in 2012 when they drafted Russell Wilson, and you just watched him. It was. It was his show from the time he got drafted. The way in which he yeah. commanded the room, the presence you felt where Russell Wilson was. Even though they gave a lot of money to the guy from Green Bay. Yeah. 100%. But yeah. that was more so like Pete Carroll. Pete Carroll likes his draft guys. Like He's yeah. kind of like, like Brad Johnson, Dan Campbell. They love their guys. Pete was always going to go with Russell in the end. Here's a question. I think we focus so much a lot of times when we talk uh, to the other teams. Uh, we talk about that team. We talk about the Minnesota Vikings. I want to ask you, what do you see in the Detroit Lions? Because this is a major, major matchup in this division. I feel like the winner of this, the winner of this game is going to be the, the catalyst right now in this division. What about the Detroit Lions do you see will give the Minnesota Vikings problems? Uh, a lot. I mean, it seems like you guys have kind of figured it out. Maybe a little, a, a little bit of a rough start. I think um, you guys weren't playing all three phases, but you know what is? I'm sure you guys have talked about the stat. It's like the first time in 62 years or something like that you guys have scored back-to-back 40-point games. Yeah. So um, obviously, offense is is humming. You're super physical on defense. You're, you're secondary, even though they have a lot of penalties. I, I like the fact that they challenge people. You know, they're they're. Going It's going to be really interesting to see how we handle the physicality up front. And not only that, I mean, I'm watching your your linebackers come up to the line of scrimmage and challenge every one of our every one of the tight ends that you guys see. Um, it is constant in your face. You don't get to take a deep breath at all. And they have the firepower offensively that if you have one small hiccup, that they can capitalize on that. The one thing that I think that we can kind of take advantage of is. You guys do such a good job of getting down offensively into the red zone. I think you guys lead the league in red zone opportunities. But the thing is, you guys are about middle of the pack, though, as far as red zone touchdowns. So you guys can get down there. You don't always score. Mm. And that's what happens with us defensively is we have a bend but don't break mentality. You're going to get all the way down there. We just have to shore up. So whoever wins that that inside the 20, that red zone period, uh, and then the fourth quarter, I think that's going to decide the game. Appreciate that, Ben. Hey, Ben, we can't thank you enough for doing this, man. All the best to you this weekend, and uh, we'll talk to you again down the road. Thanks, Ben. Yeah. Uh, Appreciate it, guys. I just want to give you guys a quick shout-out. You guys do such a good job with your production value. I'm just kind of in awe that I'm like – I'm sitting here. I'm like, wow. I mean – I was in, you know, watching you guys' show just a little bit even beforehand. I'm like, you guys do a great job with all your videos and all the stuff. So you guys, you guys first class, man. Keep it up. And, and Braylon, have fun with your Hall of Fame stuff. Hey, Ben, you're thanks, the best. Ben. Dude, thanks ben, so much. We best. really appreciate, appreciate that, thanks that thanks Ben. Little, man. You're the man. means a lot. He is uh, the man. Absolutely. Uh, check Ben out um, in Minnesota. He's of like you in Minnesota. Yeah, he is. He's, he's uh, got the morning he's show. Everything. He's got the ABC he's, he's situation there. Yeah. Level two. It doesn't switch up from spot to spot. I love it. I love it. It doesn't help stuff. that he's damn good looking. Too. No, I mean, I, I'm a better, better <laughs> yeah. looking than you for sure. For sure. Right? <laughs> you, put, you put me and him on the freaking on the screen. I'm like, man, right? get me off the screen. Uh,